I do think that there is a demand for crazy on the internet. Listen, women are getting pregnant every day in America. Build back better, blah, blah, blah. They said, you have no authority. You're not the president. The president said, I said, call him. No, screw your freedom. They're a bunch of dumb shits. No offense. Don't hate the media. They come. Talk about manufacturing reality. To find out more, fuck around. And I forgot to turn my microphone on again. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to your Liberty Radio. It is another Friday night here in COVID land. Uh, Matter of fact, it's uh, March 29th, 2024. And we are back for another round of open lines. We're glad that you're tuning in tonight. We're also glad that you're calling in tonight. Because that's, of course, is what Open Lines is all about. It is your chance to be a part of Liberty Radio and let us know what is on your mind tonight. Uh, The Zoom link, as always, is in the Telegram channel, uh, as well as out to uh, various luminaries in the Liberty Radio family. You never know. Who's going to call in on a Friday night? Uh, matter of fact, I'm thinking of maybe one other person I might want to send a link to. Uh, but we'll wait. We'll wait and see. Uh, here's how it works, folks. In order to call in, you do have to use the Zoom link for right now until we uh, test drive the new upgrade for open lines that uh, we've been working on. You don't have to turn on your video if you're shy, but you do, you do need to turn on your microphone. Uh, I, I would think that would be obvious by now, but you know, I, of course, there's people that you're going to have to tell, right? You're just going to have to tell them again. That's just the way it is. Uh, but that's it. We are here until midnight Eastern to take your calls and find out What is on your mind tonight in COVID land? And uh, looks like we already have a few folks uh, in the Zoom room tonight. Returning champion, Rob. Returning champion. (laughs) What is on your mind tonight, sir? Well, you know, I'm thinking about this uh, crazy eclipse coming up and the, uh, the starting up of the CERN Collider at the same time. Oh yeah, and uh don't forget the sacrificing of the red heifers. And the, and the red heifers yeah, are probably that's coming up too, call. man. Yeah, so I'm interested. Are we going to see like UFO fake UFOs come down from the sky in front of the eclipsed moon or eclipsed sun rather? I'm not sure. I'm not sure either. I I know they they want people to get excited for it, right? They, they, they're, they're actually actively uh, trying to get people interested in this thing that I, I don't think most people would normally be interested in, right? No, I mean, you're only going to see it in certain parts of the country anyway, so. Right. And I mean, it's, it's one of those things where like, if you really want to see this type of eclipse, it actually happens twice a year somewhere on the earth. So it's just a matter of of how much you want to do it and whether or not you have the resources to do it to go to the place where you're going to be able to see it. But of course, you know, it's also one of those things where in our history, as we're told, because, you know, we we operate under the the whole uh, we came from a more primitive species to being the advanced technological juggernauts that we are today, right? 
Like we're, we're the, the smartest and uh, most advanced human beings that have ever existed on the face of the planet, allegedly. So evolved, you're right. Right. I mean, so we're, we're told that, that these were always times where essentially the people would get taken advantage of, right? Because the priest class was able to like chart all this shit out and they knew when it was going to happen ahead of time. So they'd always like come up with some, some sort of like fancy drama to play on the people so that when the eclipse or whatever it was happened, they could be like, oh, look, see, we told you God is angry. I mean, we're just one step away from cutting hearts out and throwing it off, you know, buildings. So, yeah, I yeah, we're, we're still primitive. We're using trains right now to cut the parts off, but later it'll be more, you know. I don't didn't hear that off that far since then, but I I heard from a friend of mine that um his his idea was all these people are going to travel to be in the totality path of the eclipse, right? Right. And if there's a coinciding major incident, emergency of any stripe, mm -hmm. those people are going to be stuck wherever they're at in like, like a quarantine type sitch. Why not at home? Such a huge head, population. Coordinated voice to skull, um, microwave burst across the area where the people are gathering. Maybe they'll see Jesus in the eclipse. Yeah, is it time for the blue beam card already? <laughs> I thought we were no. I thought that was a few years out yet. Well, blue beam's like <laughs> their their trump card, right? Right. Blue beam is what they pull out when like there's that's the there's they call else. Uno and then they've got blue beam in their hand and that's it. Right. Like, like, isn't it hard to crash our system when they're still going to be using the Swift system in the background? <laughs> it's, it's actually rather complicated to, to crash the economy. Like yeah. there's a We're, lot of moving yeah. parts that you have to account for. I mean, years ago, Corbett was they're on doing that. a great job though. I mean, they're working on it. I'm not saying they're not working on it. Everybody's going to three and a half percent service fee for using plastic these days. Scan to pay. Cash is king. Oh shit. I've been forgetting to check my receipts for that. I need to start doing that. Cause I don't pay attention. Like I when if I ever have to go to like a store to buy anything now, I'm like trying to get in and out as fast as fucking possible. Yeah. Yeah. Cause everybody in there is jabbed. Yeah, <laughs> for one thing, just that's just the one thing. And then the music sucks. <laughs> well, there is. I usually have a podcast playing in my ear when I go and on top do of that like shopping and stuff. Yeah. I'm insulted by the prices. I told everybody this was going to happen. God dang it! I shouldn't have to pay. Well, that'll be the Extra. theme of the show tonight. We fucking told you so. Yeah, I didn't vote to fucking lock down, or I didn't. You know, None of us did. Show support towards this shit. Why am I paying triple for beef? Quadruple for beef. What is going on here? I remember like two weeks into the whole, you know, only leave the, ho the house for emergencies in the beginning of it. I went into the local uh, grocery store and the whole meat section was gone. There was nothing there except these packages of these gray. It looked like intestines. And it had like some generic label on it. And I, I swear it was this, the sense of humor of the meat guys at the supermarket. They just wanted to see how like panicky idiot people were getting at that point. Like, we'll take it. <laughs> that gray shit, it's mine. Get the fuck away. Yeah. They, they wanted to see people fighting over it, I think. But I like the pictures of the, the meat department in stores being like all cleared out except for the Beyond Meat. Like that was the only <laughs> thing that was there, and and it was it was full, like not a package missing. I mean, people have standards. Yeah. I mean, you got to mix a little cricket in there before you're going to sell me. Right. I don't know. I mean, I can, I can see them using the occasion of the eclipse to to try and and pull something, right. Because again, you've got all those different factors coming into play. You've got the uh, mass travel. 
Uh, you've got people in places that are, are foreign to them, right? Um, like there, there's all kinds of shit you could try and pull. All I got to do is shut down the circuit that handles digital money and there'll be a pandemonium. People will be fucking eating each other out there. Yeah. Well, like, you know, Bank of America, all their, uh, all their, their payment system just surprisingly doesn't, doesn't function during the eclipse, right? For whatever <laughs> reason. Yeah. That, well, that could I could see that starting uh, a panic in the population, but it, again, it has to be something where it's going to touch more people than just those that are eclipse crazy, right? Like you, you're going to have to to get some of the people on the outside and bring them in for this event too. I mean, sounds like a great time for a uh, police beating of a minority to like bring people together. <laughs> but I'm a traditionalist, so I mean, I, I just know the old ways. I can't tell you what the new thing is. You ripped right into it in the beginning when you said they've got a fire up CERN, they've got these heifers, and then this eclipse thing. Like, well, I mean, that all coincides. There's a lot going I mean, on. You know, they're not going to waste that momentum, all that. Oh, you know. no. Well, again, that's. They never waste an eclipse, like you said earlier, like yeah. back in, in, in Apocalypto, yeah. for example. It's, it's an attention focusing event, right? Mm -hmm. They love hijacking those. They absolutely love hijacking those. They can birth the next phase of their narrative that way. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it would kind of go to support my whole Kate died birthing the Antichrist thesis, right? Who died birthing the Antichrist? Deep Kate. Kate Middleton. Princess of oh. Wales. Ooh. Yeah. Think she's still alive? <laughs> no, no, is I think she's dead. Is, is this coming from the meme where she was holding the baby and wearing the Rosemary's baby dress? The red dress with the white little frillies. Oh, I haven't collar. even seen that. Yeah, she did actually wear like a carbon copy of the dress from Rosemary's baby and take her newborn baby out and show it off. I'm still hoping that the uh, wow. the peasants storm the castle and drag sausage fingers out into the streets. But no, nah, just... no, they're not going to do that. He has cancer. <laughs> Everybody's going to be like, we can't do it to him. He's a cancer patient. I mean, is that what happens in incest cases? You eventually, you know, your cells start mutating like that? Because, I mean, dude's been eating organic foods and probably getting the best of the best. Well, that's the thing, is he he has the status to be able to do that, right? As well as the knowledge, right? He, he doesn't have the knowledge, but they have the knowledge. So, essentially, he has the knowledge. And you're right. He could get the best of everything. Doesn't matter what it is. And he, okay, he still got cancer, whatever. Apparently everybody gets cancer nowadays. Uh, but it's also well known he has gout. So apparently having all of the knowledge and doing all of the things right still doesn't prevent you from chronic disease. You know, I thought that whole um, descendant of God thing really would have helped out in the long run. You mean they've been lying to us this whole time <laughs> for personal gain? Oh, my God. How I know dare it's hard you? to believe, Rob. How, how dare you question their integrity? The royals, God damn it. You, you might need to suspend your disbelief for this conversation, sir. <laughs> Here's the dress I was talking about. If uh, it'll give me the focus. Oh, know, holy shit. Wow, that's pretty. Yeah, I mean, pretty damn close. It's pretty damn close. Yeah. yeah. Well, where's Rosemary's baby? <laughs> Let's see. The... Where's I Rosemary? Think they were already that's giving the it cigars at this point in the movie. I forget. 
I forget. Was that, the, cigars, was that right? the one where they had like the baby like crawling on the ceiling and its head was like spinning around? Or is that yeah. a spoof of that movie that I saw? Somewhere? Do you guys remember hearing these weird stories of kids that were like holding their own heads up from birth and like uh, super aggressive at a very young age? And all this, like, I was hearing reptilians, maybe. I mean, they were. I guess. I guess they were humans, but like kids during the um, during the last four years, let's say, some of them being born with like, like just uh, just different, just built different. You know, I don't know. I was watching Max Egan's uh, videos, and like maybe two years ago, he was showing some like just newborn babies, just like basically standing up and like walking around looking for. Knives, <laughs> you know, I don't know. I don't know. Knives. Wow, I, I don't know. This is really up the game. I was wondering if you guys ever heard about that or remembered that. These are just weird. There were some you, black eyed I, babies. I might have babies heard black something eyes. about it, but yeah, it just kind of came and yeah. went. Yeah, Max is an interesting old fella. He uh, he's he uh, shoots from the hip. He's not uh. 100% truth focused, but he means well, well I he guess. He tells you what's on his mind. Oh, absolutely. I know that. I know that for a fact. Um, I, I don't know. It, it's one of those things I probably wouldn't have given it a whole lot of thought because I've been inundated for whatever reason for like the last 30 years with this whole indigo children uh, thing. Like they, they've been trying to beat that into my head for God knows how long now. And I'm Star still Channel? just like, yeah, I'm like, eh, it just sounds too fucking new agey. Yeah. Have you uh, ever looked into like reincarnation? You ever read Dr. Ian Stevenson or uh, Dr. Jim Tucker who like started following up his work? No. Really interesting stuff. He has, I think the book's called 19... 19- um, cases uh, indicative of reincarnation and it takes like a scientific approach and gets basically the kids from like two to like seven years old will have these memories of previous lives and you know some of them are like very vivid where the kids like remember names places where they hid shit before they died and they went oh, wow. and like, you know listen to what these kids said and like they had details about people that you would never know. People live in like a couple. I mean, a lot of it was in India. Some of it was in America, but it's crazy. Like the stories, it's like, you, I, I don't know how that, you know, it could be a coincidence when somebody like is uh, insisting on things and they know names, places. And <laughs> yeah, well, I've heard, I think I've heard like at least a couple of those stories before. Like one was a case of yeah. a kid in India where like he was he was like five years old and he went and visited the woman that he was married to in his previous life and was telling her stuff about their marriage that nobody else could have known only somebody in the room with him yeah <laughs> yeah yeah that, that's same thing with shit. Yeah. choice yeah. of the dalai lama or dalai lama or whatever and then I've heard of a kid in Russia who knew too much for it to be not like reincarnation, you know? I mean, and the like, Dalai Lama was always a CIA asset, but, uh, you know, the whole trying to stick his tongue in kid's mouth on the camera kind of went too far. I mean, <laughs> well, you know, Lama. Wow. Hey, I, w- wait a minute. That was before everything went topsy turvy, too, wasn't it? That was part of the ritual, yeah. Right. I, I'm losing track on this humiliation <sighs> ritual. It seems I've been playing out my whole life. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I remember right after nine eleven, freaking uh, videos of like dude out on the Pentagon Pentagon lawn talking to the news guy. Get calling a flight number and airline that hit the Pentagon that supposedly was going 600 miles an hour past them <laughs> at ground level. Like, wow, that's really dumb. And if you can Holy believe shit. it, uh, <laughs> a hijacker's passport was found a couple blocks from the World Trade yeah. Center. 
Yeah, they hit the edges with a blowtorch and everything. They did a good job, didn't they? Wow. <laughs> Man. So well, fortunately, of, the titanium uh, engines were never found. Right. Speaking of controlled demolitions, uh, <laughs> what do you guys think about the uh, the key bridge? I I just think it's incompetence, man. Like, and and if it isn't, it was cyber terrorism by Russia, and they would never admit it because they fucked around with Russia too much. They would never want to admit that there was blowback from it because they're not going to go to war over it. I mean, how many bridges over there have we knocked down and pipelines we've blown up and nukes haven't been launched yet? So, well, we've hit that, anchor. that bridge in Crimea like at least three times now. Yeah, if there's anything to it, it's just one of those. Uh, we're not going to tell you. We're going to pretend it was an accident. Ukrainian but, captain. Yeah. Then they they like scrubbed it from the internet, right? So I what I saw was on the way back, and it just happened. It was like four hours later. He's really scrubbed. interesting when you find out that they have you know the propulsion systems are all you know wired to the backup power. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, yeah, I saw that too. What, I think it was what, uh. The most compelling thing I heard was the um, what's it called? The anchor. Yeah, they they had they an had anchor down. An anchor. That's why they swung around. Yeah, that's what it looked like. It, that would definitely cause the front end of the ship to turn that way if you drop the mm -hmm. anchor that side. Because those boats aren't agile like that. They can't just. That's not a jet ski, you know. I don't know. The way it turned on a dime, it had to be. Everybody wants to find a conspiracy and everything, but sometimes there's just. Fucking dumb people and bad shit happens. This is true. There are lots I, I, of dumb people in the world. Especially now. We have more understand. dumb people in the world now than have ever existed in all of human history. Think about I that. I think a hidden hand can allegedly, also exert allegedly. an influence on things such as the safety standards of rails and the uh, you know, DEI or whatever it's called, hiring and weirdos. I just can't understand why you would allow ships to float freely without tugs guiding it out when you have such a major piece of infrastructure right there. Um, I'm sure they knew if that bridge got knocked out, bad shit was going to happen. I mean, they got the port blocked currently. Well, my, they, my question on it is, because I understand that that's the, the normal procedure for this particular port, right? Is they would, they, Normally, for a cargo ship of that size with that much mass, you know, there they would have a tug take it out into uh, where kind of the bay at least, yeah, but well beyond the bridge, and then the ship would continue on under its own power. So this that didn't happen with this ship this time. So is that is that normal? for this ship in that port or like what what's going on with that that's my main question about it it was allowed to leave port on its own to navigate on its way where that's not normally how it's done so how did that come about yeah exactly i i don't know enough about the uh way the port operates there but I, I know from being in the Navy that when your boat comes in and out of port, it comes in with tugboats mm -hmm. and it guides you. But I don't know how the commercial shipping world works. It just uh, <laughs> seems like an awful uh, convenient time for it all to happen. But Yeah. Well, I the other know. thing, too, is that it completely shuts that port down. Because yeah. you you can't you can't get anything in or out of that port now, until you get all of that debris cleared out of the way, because all it's going to take is you know one one vessel having their hull ruptured by debris that was left behind from the collapse, and you know you're going to have a major lawsuit. Yeah, I think they they brought up some crane from the Chesapeake that can pick up like a a quarter of what that bridge weighs. So they were saying they got to figure out what uh, parts to cut to break it into manageable pieces so they can get it out of the area. So we'll see. 
What do you think? You know, it's uh, the overall repercussions are going to be to the East Coast and um, the supply chain. I mean, Philadelphia is literally, you know, stones well, throw away from that. Yeah, but so Philadelphia is already a shithole, apparently. It is. I mean, but if you're if you're looking for an East Coast hub that has access to the highways, I mean, Philadelphia is right there above Baltimore. I mean, of course, you're not going to be able to go over the key bridge to deliver this stuff south, but yeah, I guess there's got um, Virginia points that you can Fairfax and I mean, the, yeah, there's still other other routes that you can take as far as as shipping goes to that part of the East Coast. It's it's going to hurt the immediate area around the port the most, I think, because they're now going to have to figure out other ways to do something that was already pretty efficient. So they, so do you think they basically round been set up, back. You think they're going to round up some migrants from our, you know, they've been letting millions in and, you know, bring them all to the port and make a human bridge to go across for uh, convenience sake? Or <laughs> No, I think they'll use the American citizens for that purpose. I think that's what we're for. At least our tax dollars. Uh, well, definitely our tax dollars and, and probably some of our bodies too. Because again, there's there's like uh, six dudes that were working on that bridge that are still unaccounted for and they're basically like, oh, we, we ain't found them yet, so. I mean, Joy, Ray, Joy Reed pointed out that they were all, um, you know, of Hispanic descent for some reason she pointed that out. I mean, I think she thinks that white How supremacy- How does she know? I think white supremacy brought that bridge down. I mean, we can say it here. <laughs> uh, you may be onto something, Rob. You might. I, mean, I, I don't want to, you know, go out there to speculation island and say that this was planned from the top, from the Rand Corporation and Raytheon and uh, probably like Boeing, McDonnell Douglas. They all had a hand in it. Oh, I knew something was coming. Maybe the aliens, and we're not talking about the uh, the migrants. We're talking about the real aliens, or the the fake and gay aliens. I, I don't know the fake and gray aliens. Yeah, they're out there. Yeah, sure, and they're totally real. They are absolutely I mean, real. But you better believe my, uh, my my thoughts on it is like all this supposed like technology it's either made in uh it's not iron mountain is it place in california the movie studio skunk works no not the skunk works there's the uh cia movie theater out, oh, right uh, outside look out Laurel. mountain oh. look out mountain there you go no um, they shut that down rob that's that's <laughs> been shut down Nah, they're not they using that facility anymore. Mm -mm. They shut down. They made like 44,000 movies right. or something. Out they shut place. down Mockingbird. That's right. They shut down MK Ultra. That was shut down. And and they got back out of bed with the mob. They got in bed That's with right. Whack JFK. That's right. So they're not connected anymore They started anymore running at all. guns and drugs themselves. So they didn't oh, need the mob for that anymore. Mm. Mockingbird right. was cute when you could feed your stories to a couple well-placed sources in the main publications. I mean, they got a little greedy. They took them all over, and now, like, every story comes out is, you know, vetted by their people, I guess. Rolling Stone, you know, they're really on top of things. Them and the Wall Street Journal, they tell me exactly what I want to hear. <laughs> well, the Wall Street Journal, uh, a lot of people don't know this. The Wall Street Journal gets all of its news from the editorial staff of The Economist. Is that right? That's right. And they get all of their news from the Reuters Foundation. Do you think they're running it through an AI to at least like make up a couple different words or are they going if, verbatim? If they are, they're actually using one of the good AIs. Because I don't, I don't see a whole lot of syntax error in the Economist articles. I, maybe they've just got really good proofreaders, right? That's always possible. And like the AI is spitting the shit out and people are proofing it. And they're like, no, you spelled that wrong. You spelled that wrong. This is the wrong use case for this word. Maybe. You know, I, I mean, those people exist. I'm one of those people. I asked the AI a few months back um, to write me a song 
about freedom and government censorship. And it told me that help was available for me and I should reach out to the available resources. <laughs> I took a oh, screenshot. That's what you should have titled the song. <laughs> reach out to the available resources. Damn it. That was a missed opportunity, Rob. Yeah, always coming up with good ideas. The first time I ever used that ChatGPT, the three five version, I was like checking code at work and like came back with like solid code that helped one of my guys. He was asking me about something and I uh, gave him this code and it like got him over the obstacle. And I was like, man, this is great. This is going to fucking put us all out of work in, you know, five years. And then after that, like every time I tried to get code out of it, it was just like jumbled bullshit. It had like old commands that didn't work. And it did, it would, you know, you would feed it the error and it would be like, oh, I'm sorry. Here, try this, try this. And like nothing would fucking work. So my, my confidence in AI algorithms dropped. But uh, AI is a misnomer. It's really no artificial intelligence. You're just what? What are you talking about, Rob? Fast algorithms written by dumb fucking people. You're, you're saying that AI is some sort of scam? I mean, you saw what Google's version pumped out when they were looking for pictures of the founding fathers. All right. I mean, you you need all right. You need the to Thomas listen. Jeffersons. <laughs> You need I to mean, listen to this headline here, Rob. Not the, not the save 25%, but uh, Microsoft and OpenAI plot $100 billion Stargate AI supercomputer. How about that? I'm, I'm pretty sure DARPA has a bank of uh, grown freaking human brains and like jars. And jars hooked up to out. electrodes hooked up to electrodes and some computer program that's probably telling these clowns how they should be doing things. It seems a little sloppy. I mean, being in like the IT business, like it used to be, they would give you like programs that they like tested and did all kinds of work on. Then it all of a sudden became like, now you're the beta tester, the customer's the beta tester. Tell us the uh, problems you find. And, uh, kind of like the way of the world really <laughs> yeah unfortunately i can't i can't read all of the article because it wasn't actually uh archived hey, well, anywhere where where it was the entire article uh but yeah apparently they're gonna throw a hundred billion dollars at open ai to build uh the biggest uh, i guess neural neural net i was gonna say they need a neural net this um silly algorithm based idea ideology isn't working out it never would well it's but. good it's good for controlling people right because yeah. it's it's a it's a repetitive loop basically you I just mean, get if, people on a loop and you keep feeding them the same stuff over and over if ai was uh given access to all information I'm pretty sure if they were looking for a problem, it would be some oligarchs and there might be some drone strikes. I don't know if it was given autonomy. I don't think it would kill all of us. Why well, would they've, it kill already, the they've already deployed the uh, autonomous killing drones. That's already yeah, been done. And then they got the manned ones. They got people, you know, out yeah. in the desert, Nevada, just piloting like they're playing freaking Call of Duty. Calling it an airstrike. Yeah, but they also have ones where they, they don't need the human. They just, they give it a target and it goes. Yeah, there's nothing could possibly go wrong with that. <laughs> I mean, it's not like we, it was like we grew up with a movie that kind of like told us how it would go. Right. <laughs> like, are there any episodes of Black Mirror left that haven't come true yet? I mean, I remember the dude said, like, at the beginning of COVID that he couldn't write episodes anymore because, like, the real world was darker than anything he could come up with anymore. I, th I think he, like, went back on it. They dropped a dump truck full of money on his door and he was like, well, you know, there's always this. I haven't seen a dark mirror in a long time.
the last one I watched was the uh, Choose Your Own Adventure one. Did you see that? That was a good one. That was a pretty good one. Yeah. The guy's like, yeah, I'm on acid. Like, nobody will even know. I'm going to jump off this building. And freaking everybody's like, I don't know where he's at. Nobody knows. <laughs> well, see, this is my whole thing with AI. It's like every other fad technology that they try to, to pass off as being like the, the greatest thing, right? Television was like this. Radio was like this when it was brand new. And none of these technologies that have been foisted on us over time have been able to live up to the promise that we were sold on when they were brand new. I have no doubt in my mind that AI is going to end up exactly the same way. It's, it's going to be some sort of tool that is used to program the human species. Because radio did it kind of okay, but television did it better. And then once they got us on the internet, oh, holy shit. Look at, we, look at what we can make these motherfuckers do. I think they released the internet before they had the ability to put the controls around it that they have now. So, I mean, when the internet well, yeah, first and came, they keep, they keep working on, on reining it in. That's why we're, we're making the transition to web 3.0 so they can they, again, have tighter, stricter control on each individual user. Are they still calling it the information superhighway like they had previously? <laughs> no, I think I think what happened is uh, Al Gore trademarked that phrase, and as soon as he did that, everybody completely lost interest in it. I mean, that was one of the best things when I first got a high speed internet connection. It's like you can look up anything, and there's like not a whole lot of. Uh, that, I mean, there was really no censorship back then. The algorithms went and tried to look for actually what you searched for. I was doing a uh, test with Yandex and Google the other day just to see what would come up if I uh, Googled and uh, Yandex James Corbett. And Yandex, the very first search result was CorbettReport.com. And the good, the, yeah, like the, the ones underneath it were things that Corbett was in, maybe a video from his website or like doing something with somebody else. But it was all like, it wasn't, what you usually find when you do Google. Google, I have to say, is better than it used to be because it actually showed up as the seventh <laughs> search result. Oh, wow. um, I, remember, I remember searching for him years ago and like the first like 10 things were all like uh, those hit pieces that they put out on independent media people telling the truth. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. I actually, I used Google a couple of weeks back and I Googled GTW Liberty Radio, and believe it or not, the top search result was the Odyssey channel. Wow. I was like, wow, that's crazy. Yeah, that hasn't happened in a long time. Somebody must be squirreling around with those things. I think they're, uh, they're in the mindset that they're going to give people enough rope to hang themselves with as they keep putting out new regulations and rules, and next thing you know, like like the old saying that everybody commits like a felony a day or multiple felonies a day and you don't know it. It's, it's going to be one of those things and selectively enforced. Oh, yeah. Of course. You heard is. the FBI is uh, going door to door about uh, people not supporting Biden, like saying F Joe Biden on on their social media. Well, not only the that. FBI. Uh, there is uh, there's actually a video that's been going around. Uh, I saw it this morning of three alleged FBI agents talking to a woman about a social media post that she had made in favor of the Palestinians. And they were trying to get her to uh, give up her uh, identification uh, information and all this other stuff. And she was just not having any of it. And I'll tell you, these people did not look like FBI agents at all. No. And they, I think if it's the same video I watched, like she, they, they were saying that they flashed her the ID and she told them to wait a minute and went back inside. Is that the video? Yeah, it was uh, two dudes and out. a woman. 
And when she came back out and was recording, they wouldn't show her the ID again. No, we right. showed it to you. Right. Like what kind of like government official um, who's on the up and up is going to like refuse to show you their ID a second time? Yeah. Call our office so we can uh, chat to you about your social media posts. How about no fuck you? Then did I threaten anybody or like propose violence? No, I'll just... tell you right now, if they if they show up at my doorstep, I'll be like, you need to hold up your credentials there from the bureau so I can take a picture of them. Once yeah. I have those pictures in my possession, I'll be more than happy to talk to you. Yep, outside of my house. That's right. Well, hopefully it never comes to that. Hopefully it doesn't, but um, if yeah, this the sad is part legit, is, it's, they're, they're it's criminal, not a good they're, sign. They're criminalizing people who um, believe in the foundations. I mean, at least what they told you about the country. Maybe not what they, uh, you know, the rich people who founded it actually had in, in mind for us, but at least the bullshit story they sold me when I was little. <laughs> What's going on out there, Recycle Bin Laden? What do you got to say? Oh, I just, uh, I drew this picture a number of years ago. And um, when you were talking earlier about acting like it's a video game, I thought, oh, I bring this up and just show it to you. Yeah. Mm. you know I, really I, I kind of traced the pig's face off of a picture of a pig on my fondle slab. But <laughs> I was really proud of the little dog and the boy. I was like, damn, art. <laughs> Nice. It really doesn't seem to impact anybody with people knowing that the uh, military is using those games as like training for their future soldiers. Nobody seems to be bothered. I was searching yeah. for this meme the other day and uh, I couldn't find it. It's old, but it's so good. And it's every day useful every single day. Yeah. Well, I mean, that, <laughs> that is the strategy right there. I mean, that looks like Netanyahu's battle plan. And that's one of the meanings of Recycled Bin Laden. <laughs> Expound on that. Let's get deep. It, I, it's just that idea of uh, having, oh, well, Tim Osman was a CIA employee, right? So the Pentagon steered him around. And, you know, it's the same thing with uh, funding, uh, arming giving Toyota trucks and weapons and munitions to ISIS and Al Qaeda, you know, they, they gave up the armaments at uh, Benghazi on purpose so they could have those RPGs to make those headlines to involve our military in Syria and where we hold the wheat and oil to this day, I believe. I mean, one so, of the, the million things that didn't add up about that whole thing was Dude supposedly supposedly has a rabid group of followers who will like die for him, but the motherfucker couldn't get a kidney from one of these fucking assholes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he's on a dialysis machine in a cave somewhere. In a cave yeah. in, in Afghanistan. No, <clears throat> you know. Well, I mean, they, that they wire every cave in Afghanistan for electric. You know that, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, oh, I forgot. Yeah. It's, Silly it's, me. Uh, it's like a, a, what do you call it? A regulation or something. I mean, the opium trade really does pay well. So those <laughs> guys, they acted like they were guarding the farmers in the poppy fields with their guns. They were like, grow that fucking heroin, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> like you know, it's funny because they did the same thing in Cambodia. Yeah. 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 It's all bullshit. Everything everybody believes is bullshit. And it's like so many layers that you don't want. You can't give up the first one because you, inside you sense that There's once you give up the first one, it's all going to come apart and you're going to just float off into space because you have a, you have to have that tether, your strong foundation of all the programming you've ever been given. Well, so when you, I'm here to tell you, you yeah. do not float off into space. Yeah. Yeah. You, but you know you what might, I mean? You get that that yeah. terror of I, I don't know what's going on and I'm terrified. You don't want oh, that. Yeah. You want to be like, I know what's going on. I'm, I'm cool. I know everything. I'm actually I'm I'm that glib. twice in my life now. Thankfully, I don't think it's going to happen again. 
they they I just remember out Vietnam so they could send heroin back in body bags. So I mean that just goes to show you the yeah. <laughs> demented fucks you're dealing with. And then we get into Afghanistan and we do it for like 20 years, you know, <laughs> like longer than Vietnam. You know? And it's I the mean, same exact watching, thing. I was watching sports ball, so I, I forgot that they were even at war for at least ten of those years. Mm. Yeah, there was some pretty good sports ball in those years. I'll agree with you on that, Rob. Yeah. Uh, I still have fond memories of 2019. I do. 2019. Yeah, they're starting to fade at this point, but I do still have some of those memories. I, I remember in November 2019, I went to a Tool concert in I Philadelphia. Did I did too. I went to one in D.C. I have a shirt to prove it. And I got some respiratory sickness that was like November 2019. And I was sick for like a month. My girlfriend had been sick. Like, Holy was, shit. Was, you got the coup early, man. And, and I remember you got the like. the coup from Tool. How cool is that? The, the beginning of December when I would go to go to work, the freaking train station parking lot would be like half empty. Like people, like it wasn't vacation time. People were out sick. And it was like the weirdest thing. And then all of a sudden we started hearing, oh yeah, there's a respiratory virus in China. And I'm like, oh, this is bullshit. This is bullshit. And then like, I, okay, now I guess it's going to be a thing here now. They started, people came over in Seattle. They're on the West Coast. We got patient zero. <laughs> My friend used a calculator and the number of people who got co tested and got or positive test result for COVID versus the number of people who died of COVID. And he figured out way the fuck back in like the first or second month of this thing. Okay, the death rate's like zero, zero point, you know, zero five percent or some shit. It mm -hmm. was a, it was small. Because he, he did the crunched the fucking numbers and, and he and he posted it. I saw it. I shared it. I did the math myself. I verified his results because it's important, right? Mm -hmm. I don't I'm not like I want to do math. I want to read scientific studies. I fucking don't, bro. Well, but the most amazing it was important thing, enough. The most amazing part about it was how COVID scared the flu away, and it just right. totally disappeared for a whole year. Yeah. But well, it was like more than a 30, year. From like 30 million cases a year to <laughs> a couple hundred. And I just, I'm shocked. I'm shocked too, because I didn't think COVID was that scary. But apparently it was. You know, scared, it scared I, the flu into hiding for a long damn time. I, I personally don't know anybody who died with, of COVID. Um, but I do know a lot of people who've had some shitty side effects from the vaccines. Damn. Um, substantially more. And, you know, there's a lot of people who have mystery illnesses now that were perfectly healthy before that if they drank the Kool-Aid, they ain't going to ever come back and say, yeah, I was wrong. Yeah. Yeah. They're, you, they're. He's a bitch. <laughs> I'm I'm actually surprised that there are people who are able to do that. Cuz again, that's that's one of those compounding things, right? It's the it's part of the whole sunken cost fallacy, it, you know, in for a penny in for a pound. Absolutely. And it's just it's one more thing. It's one more pain point to be pushed on. It's it's one more thing to send people to their happy place. It was the dumbest thing from the get-go. Like it the, was. It was fucking retarded. Talking, the talking points they were all using. and uh, well, well, That's it, why I called it an IQ test. It, we're all in it together. And it was, I mean, when it first happened, like, I, I mean, maybe because I'm in tune with independent media that actually gives you the, the, the truth as they see it. Yeah. Look at look into it for yourself, kind of thing, dude. I, I remember, I remember, I was living in Fairfax at the time, like in the city of Fairfax was where I lived, like 
Uh, City Hall was like a couple blocks over from the house. You remember when they were doing the whole bang the pots and pans together for the doctors and and nurses and you're, you were supposed to do it at a specific time. Like train seals. Yeah. To disrupt sleep. So people would get sick. So their immune systems would degrade and they would get ill so they could pad the numbers. Well, I was still, I was still smoking cigarettes at that time and I would go outside smoking a cigarette because I wasn't allowed to smoke in the house. And I would hear people out on their fucking front porches banging their pots and pans. And I was just like, oh, you got to be fucking kidding me. And these, I mean, there's- dude, that the house that I lived in, which was not a large house, it was maybe 1,600 square feet if it was that. But it was valued at half a million dollars. All right. There were more expensive houses in the neighborhood than the house that I lived in much more expensive and these motherfuckers were out there banging their pots and pans yeah so do you remember the wave of fireworks being used in the inner cities at like 3 a.m every night no no okay there were lots of news what stories cities about were they this. doing that in i live near philadelphia i don't remember um, hearing anything. it was like new york and Chicago type hmm. cities. I don't know. I just remember seeing story after story, and this is continuing for weeks now. And residents are fed up; they can't sleep. Blah blah blah. Apparently, this, this happened. Women in the face game up in New York City, right? Probably now. 2020, late, late 2020, early 2021. But I remember thinking then that they're, they're trying to fuck up people's sleep. Because that oh, yeah. hurts their immune system. Then they get oh, yeah. sick. Then they go in. Then they get the remdesivir. Then they get on the ventilator. And well, then they make their 60 grand or whatever. When you're in a constant state of fear, your body releases cortisol and it makes you sick. So right. if, yeah. you th- if you think you're going to die, then... Uh, Not only that, but deep maybe. rest is the regenerative, regenerative phase where your body does the best healing. You know, yeah. and fights illness the best. That's my understanding, anyway. I'm not a doctor. I know sleep is important. The older I get, the more I feel it. I just know I need sleep. You know, if you've ever stayed at a Holly and Express, man, we'll take your opinion on this. <laughs> Shit, I don't even remember. <laughs> I stayed at a place called the Crack Hole. The Crack Hole. Oh, I what stay- happened to my oh. I, I rolled my arm down on my volume here. Sorry. <laughs> I stayed at a place. Didn't year change year on our end. Uh, how was it? Like it was. It was North Jersey, um, Airbnb. Me and my son were going to see a Metallica concert, and it was like a Friday and a Sunday, the two night concert thing. So we got a room, and it was. Uh, the cheapest one we could find and we were across the street from a freaking trap house an abandoned trap house <laughs> and we were like sitting out on the porch like smoking bowls like at night watching the, the people like walk in and out yeah when i was a cab driver i'd, I'd pick up the uh the what's the term crack whore i'd pick up the <laughs> odd crack whore take her to the trap house and then i'd see the clientele come and shit like on the pickups you know like see who's coming and going it's like some old married dude just wants to smoke some crack and bang this chick and then i'm sorry why i'm talking about this you get her in the you get her in the cab and she doesn't want to give you money for the ride she wants she wants to pay you different that's right she wants she wants to pay you different 1250 hits different you know that's right she's like she's like come inside my friend my friends here too, you know, and they start doing poses, and I'm like, man, I need that twelve fifty for the for the kid, bro. Thank God I've my wife at home. Low job because uh, I probably have some kind of sores I didn't want. <laughs> Half the fucking uh, cab yeah. drivers were sex offend registered sex offenders, like a lot of them, a surprising amount because they did they would hire whatever. But you think we don't really do a background check? Why do you want a sex offender in a fucking? car alone with random people all the time like that's wow well that that's perfect spot for a predator yeah you have a captive audience 
I mean, that's why if I was a child molester, I'd either work at a daycare or ride, like drive the short bus or something. <laughs> Like those kids that can't it's talk. It's not something I really aspire to, or what about the places I'd work? No, but I'm I'm looking for those maggots. I'm looking. I'm peeling. I'm lifting the rock to see them squirm. I don't want to get them. And, and the short bus driver, he's always smiling. You know, like what's going on? Oh, come on, Rob, get deviant with us. <laughs> there mean, are so many fucking pedophiles. Driving called a deviant, but never for something like that. <laughs> we only talk about the elite ones, but there's like ones in our neighborhood. You know. It's like, I oh, can't dude, wait. There's fucking monsters everywhere, man. Yeah. If, I mean, how much is the uh, job really work? If it turns into like Liberia level civil war and craziness around where I, I live, I can I'm see. going Castlevania on some of them if I get a chance. Yeah, you know I, I, mean? I can see pockets of this country turning into Sierra Leone really fast. Really fast. Chicago you is drive, one of those places. I drive by like 26. Uh, registered sex offenders on my way to the fucking grocery store, according to the internet. <laughs> yeah, like there's a, lot. there's a website that you can check. Everybody's a sex day. offender on the internet. Get Chat GPT I, I to give me an algorithm that'll sift through all that and give me the repeat on the under ten. Give me those they, guys' names. They they you know, have like, all like dumped on the main street in my town. Alfred, like, Robin, get in here. Which is like. <laughs> It must be like the one spot that is far enough away from the local elementary schools that they can still live there. But I don't know. I think uh, maybe you should keep an eye on your kids. I, that's all. Yeah. For real. Oh, no doubt, dude. It It's not going to be much longer before parents are being prosecuted for what their children have done. It's coming. When I was out in San Francisco two years ago, I was walking through this like park near uh, Haight Asbury Street. It was actually off of it, and uh, I stumbled past this playground that had a sign out there that said "Adults must be accompanied by children." And I was like, Gee, <laughs> "If you had to put a sign out there, there must have been a fucking problem, right?" Yeah. <laughs> yep. Well, the reason I say Castlevania is it's literally it's it the most the easiest way to explain the cycle of violence and abuse with pedophilia is vampirism. Because just like a vampire bites someone and there's a chance they become a vampire, their victim. Mm. The the child who's been sexually abused has a much higher chance of becoming a child predator, like a, a, a predator of children. So, like, it's just like vampirism, like it's or just, just like something in general. Yeah, it's just some some kind of like thing you have to nip in the bud. You have to protect the children in order to not spawn these monsters. So are you, you know saying I mean? you saying the Beebs has been touching children? You got I can't accept that. It wouldn't surprise me. It wouldn't surprise me at all. That is, this a, is what um, you want. This is what that you is get. A twisted fucking web. It really is, man. I did not expect it to spiral as quickly as it did. Yeah. I mean, did you. <laughs> People think that this was done to like seize information to protect powerful people. Get the fuck out of here. No. Like you well, maybe, your, maybe. You know, you outlived your usefulness. That's part of it. I, I'm pretty sure the people who um, have been blackmailed, they're not on that upper tier. That would just be my guess. I think but he pissed somebody off. I, I wonder who takes the place. I mean, everybody says Jay Z will fall next, which is nah. you know. Probably not going to happen, but if it did, it wouldn't surprise me. No, I think I think he pissed somebody off. What do you think, RBL? Oh yeah, he must have crossed somebody or crossed uh, a threshold where you know you can't silence every last person effectively because it's become he's in his excess mode where he's like so used to getting away with it that he just gets really sloppy. Is a thing maybe I don't know. I don't really know, but. But when I look at this video of Justin Bieber, every adult's reaching for his dick, kissing on his neck, telling him he's 16, 15. This James Corden dude, he's like, oh, you smell so good when I look in your dreamy eyes and all this and trying to touch him. And something. It's like 
Yeah, Everybody's like, pawing him up. You know? Look. I look, I feel violated. <laughs> this guy I would also he's like, come here, violated. let me smell you. Yeah. Uh why are you touching me and trying to sniff me, dude? Uh I'm 16. What the fuck is going on? This is not appropriate. James Corden's like, well, your eyes are so dreamy. Look at your skin. I want to touch your face. <laughs> Watch and just thinking about that pride video he did in his little stupid like bug car when he's like singing or whatever i, I don't know i'm done i watched that's all i got documentary about nickelodeon and that's like hard to watch freaking drake bell breaking down like that's fucked up yeah his, and, know, they, and, and they and they didn't really do anything back, and his they paid lip service piece of shit yeah they're not giving him money for therapy even you know you knew that dude was an asshole from head of the class when he was on, on head of the class you know uh, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't watch any of that stuff. My didn't time was, it. Uh, was it, you can't do that on television? No, like, you would have been like seven or eight when that came out. Because I was like five, I think. Or six. It was when I was getting I ready to like. First, I didn't watch it. Kindergarten, first grade. It, I was like, it was, oh, a thing about school. Right. Watch about that's school. why I didn't watch it. Because it was about school. I was like, no, fuck that. I have to put up with enough of that shit. I might I didn't have been second TV grade, so I was probably like fourteen years old. We didn't have uh, anything but three, six, ten were like the local channels, and then you had like two channels on the other band where were like reruns of the old shows. Welcome back, Kava. Yeah, cable <laughs> came around. Well, because I had before the parents got divorced, which was when I was still single digits. I had a friend that lived down uh, the street. We were we were like uh, in one cul-de-sac, and he lived in the opposite cul-de-sac at the other end of the street. And then there was an outlet that took you out to the main street. Uh, but he had HBO in like 1980, 1981, something like that. Because I remember like watching uh, like Last Starfighter and a whole bunch of other movies that. I was maybe too young to watch at that point uh, over at his house before the parents got divorced. So that had to be pre-84. And then when the parents got divorced, dad got cable. So MTV. Yay. Yeah. Remember Did you ever freak TV? out when you first got MTV when Ooh. you'd go out in the car and the radio would be on and it'd be like, it'd be like um, some random song. And you get in your house, turn on MTV, and it's playing the same song and go, oh, like, I was excited about it. I wasn't oh, like, yeah. they're taking over. Dude, MTV I was, was like, this the is shit. Great. You grew up Holy when MTV actually played music videos. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and other stuff, too, because they had... Uh, what a year. They the had Nintendo the young comes ones. Out, MTV comes out. They showed the young ones on, on MTV in the first few Fuck yeah, years. man. Well, well, I didn't get to see that until later so on VHS. <laughs> I loved Vivian. He was Man, so the, cool. head, the head. Uh, the Headbangers Ball was like the only place you could hear like hardcore music that wasn't. They never play on the radio. Yeah, it's one of the cool things they did. But and Rick Mayall. Sorry, before we gloss over the young ones, Rick Mayall, Truther. Have you seen his stuff? No. Like. His his final message, you should you should play it on your show. I Give found a, a like twelve minute cut of it. Dude, I'm always um, looking for yeah, shit. Yeah, give to me play. a sec. Got to send Steve some uh, questions. They asked Adam Curry. I'll play, it, I'll play it on a stream. I'm not gonna play it on. Uh, I'll on give this. you the real short one. It's a really short clip. Do you think it'll get us a copyright strike? <laughs> no, it's it's actually not from any uh, published thing. He's just having a smoke between takes and there's a camera on and he's talking. Uh, gotcha. All right. Fuck it. We'll play it. You send it on discord. If I can find it, it seems like it should just be popping up in my, uh, now they fucked up the it's internet, like... man. Nothing's where it's supposed to be. And everything takes twice as long to get there. Hmm. <laughs> Pissing me off. This will serve. Uh, and I'll send it to you on the Discord if that's all right. Yeah, man. Boom. Look at that. 
the magic of the interwebs, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see. He also did the film One by One, which was about uh, world global government and um, culling the human population with vaccines. Oh, nice. It's one of the, the topics discussed in the mill. As long as, and also 9 11. Sounds like science obvious fiction. Horse shit. It was one of the last films he ever worked on. And then he, he gave this little snippet. It's, I love the fucking man. All right. I think he really gave his life because he knew. Let's check this Similar out. Similar to Aaron Russo. Mm. What you fucking do? You don't know? No. Viewers, you don't know who the cameraman is. No. You don't know why you're being made to see these things. Nor do I. You're seeing me. I can't even see you. I may be dead by the time you watch this. But it possibly are. You don't know who's the man who's making things he wants you to see. Destroy your television sets now. You must listen to no orders. That's all I can tell you for this point of humanity. Believe me. That's our attention. I didn't really understand it. Yeah, I have seen that, that before. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen it. Pretentious. Did it seem pretentious? That's what he asked, you know. I was asking, he's, didn't, yeah. didn't seem pretentious to me. I mean, he again. He said he no. Might... He says after he he says his speech, he looks to the his aide and says, "Did that sound pretentious?" <laughs> I mean, he is dead now, so always oh, making you laugh. You know? There's that, even so with serious got... stuff. <laughs> so but that's the thing. was he being no, serious or was he acting? That was it. Was the the movie itself was like some thing about the new world order and they were all living in britain and things were like getting you know he died down. while out jogging speech was getting uh violated people were coming in to uh question people in their place of business kind of thing and they were like trying to convince one of their friends that this was all happening and they're showing them stuff and that guy i think was the one who was the narrator of the movie I forget what his name is, but he died shortly after he made that movie. What's the name of the movie? One by One? Is that the one you're thinking of? I don't... I know it was supposed to be some futurist... Oh, he's working on one. I'm sorry. He's still alive? I thought he was dead. You know, you're saying he was working on a film that, and I don't know the answer... I thought you meant the one that was finished and released that yeah. I was talking about. I saw that. Now I'm really curious. I'm trying to remember what that guy's name was. Rick Mayo. Rick Mayo. Wasn't he like a TV personality in the UK? The Escape is the name well, of his final film. Was that name that one was called One by One? Yeah. One by one. Hmm. You can look up the depopulation scene from One by One. It's like seven minutes long. And it's the whole gist of the film basically right there. Yeah, they're bringing down their normie friend, showing them. They try to wake it, up their normie friend and, oh, and wow. they go through. You crazy. I think, I think I remember hearing something about this. I'm sorry. You brought up the young ones just as an aside. And I dove so far into like, I just love Rick Mayall. And I think he was one of us. And I think he was too influential to be. I'm not sure if he died of a rapid, fast acting cancer or not, but he was he was jogging the day it happened. Hmm. I remember that much. You know, if they would have grabbed uh what was the guy's name? David Koresh at Waco while he was out jogging that morning, they might have not murdered a bunch of children. But that's not how the FBI operates. No, oh, he had a heart attack, sorry, in his home. And he seemed happy and healthy right before. I got to show you all this. This is too damn funny. So I, I literally typed in what you said, RBL. Depopulation scene one by one. Mm -hmm. And the first thing that comes up is Bill Gates. 
What could cause wow. in a single year an excess of 10 million deaths? <laughs> that's okay. That's the uh, trailer. <laughs> there we go. You Got guys the heard of the, um, the fan or is the ghost person theory that governments falsely inflate their uh, population numbers and that the real population is like half what they say it is. I could see that. I could I, definitely I could see, see that, too, but I I haven't seen anything that would uh, make it, you know, indisputable or true. Just a uh, some somebody threw out there kind of thing, but it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, how many uh, people are real on the the ex social media you think, and how many are bots? Mm. Right. I think Twitter is at least fifty percent bots. Yeah, you can't possibly either. more. You can't comment on anything without picking up a new follower that's some like sex chat bot. Yeah. So the you, slut that's, bots thank love you. Liberty Radio. You would not thank believe you for it. Taking Rob. the shame away. You would not believe because it. <laughs> taking the shame away. I'm building no, because I got a like slut ten bot army on Twitter. Ten slut bot followers out of nowhere, and I was like, "What did I do to deserve this?" I commented um, on a post. You, you made a comment on a post. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll take them. Out. I'll take them all. If, if they, if they want to come and follow Liberty Radio on Twitter, and by the way, it's at GTW Liberty Radio. Come follow us, man. We, we got room for all the slut bots. And we don't care what your kinks are. Like That's the right. CIA apparently <laughs> categorized them. <laughs> So what else is going on this weekend? You guys uh, going to any uh, reenactments of the resurrection of the Christ? No, nah, no, I'm not. What about you, RBL? Uh, we had an impromptu Easter egg hunt earlier. Oh, nice. Because uh, at least one of the hens started laying inside of a piece of uh, <laughs> uh, heating duct that's laying by the barn. I guess the sun warms it and she thought she'd be smart and just hatch her eggs with solar power or something. It was all full of fucking like 18 eggs. We we're wondering where the eggs are going and they're just like a pile right here. We found yesterday. Wow. So, so we're messing with chickens. Usable? We're messing with rabbits. I, I think they're usable for dog food. I'm going to boil them all in the big outside pot on a wood fire. I like keep uh, promising my kids. I'm going to do a, uh, recreation of the crucifixion of Christ on the front lawn, but they never take me seriously. I, I need to get motivated this year. Time's running out. There, there's not many shopping days left till crucifixion. No, I, I think you're I'm right really, on that. as far as my weekend and every weekend to in the foreseeable future, I'm doubling down on uh, food production. How many animals we can have here and raise and and so i'm working on rabbit hutches and and chicken coops and chicken runs and uh garden fences and uh what i'd like to know viewers in the audience what's the best thing to do about a cabbage moth i've heard of nets and i've heard of hmm. other things i'm thinking about the net i've already got the steel frame like it's an old piece of like that steel fence that's kind of really rigid. I don't know the the gauge, but I've I've built these like canopies to hang netting on to protect my cabbages this time. We got to get the net. Uh, well, we are uh, we're broadcasting on uh, Rumble. We're broadcasting on Odyssey. We're broadcasting on Twitter. Uh, and I believe we're also uh, being rebroadcast on Radio 8424 tonight. So the uh, the Zoom link is in the Liberty Radio Telegram channel, uh, which again, you can find on Telegram at, at GTW Liberty Radio. Uh, I don't know. You might notice a pattern there. Uh, it's in there. Uh, call in and uh, let RBL know what to do about cabbage moths. And I'm sure there's a lot of other folks listening right now that would also like to hear that answer. That's what we're here for. 
Just. And we got about 45 more minutes where you can do it. So chop, chop. Just every year with the cabbage moths, they don't, they don't quit. They don't take a year off. And Dude, you go out and you're like, oh, look at this for. big, enormous head of cabbage. It's what I guess they're so. fucking they're born called, for, it's dude. It's a cabbage moth, what, You right? think all of a sudden you're going to have a year where all the cabbage moths are just like, nah, I'm good. I just thought they'd be cool, you know, and just give me like two heads out of the eight or whatever. Yeah, I think you're going to have more yeah. to worry about than cabbage moths this year, unfortunately. Because we're getting to the point where the... Uh, the locusts should be starting to widespread cannibalism, double locust <laughs> hordes, yeah. meteors, EMPs. Yep. Yeah. And and a possible alien Crippled invasion. Crippled infrastructure. That's right. And a possible alien invasion. That's what I that's what I got you for quarantine. Yeah, I think we might go into like a new quarantine during this thing somehow for some reason, whether it's like war related or whatever. And the people that traveled get stuck in the new zone and have to go hustle to the FEMA camps and then blah, 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 blah. something. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe the people that they're shipping in go get in those homes that are empty now. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just thinking about it. I'm very high. I, don't I have know. nothing to talk about. All I know just is the spewing. government has a contingency plan for moving large amounts of people at the same time into concentrated areas. They have had this plan on the books for decades, and they have been slowly refining these plans and the logistics necessary to carry out this task for decades. Uh, How long do you think until they break us into the different zones that the uh, UN plan calls for? Wasn't there supposed to be like five different zones in the United States that were going to break us into? I don't know. I would think there would have to be some sort of uh, internal disorder in order for something like that to come about. Like you got to have that first. Well, either one of these two front runner idiots that are running for president. Like, I mean, I could see a constitutional crisis with either one of them being in office. I mean, I don't think it really matters yeah. who's in office. I, I you know, I, I want to be like misrepresented as someone who uh, supports Trump. But I do remember as soon as he got into office, uh, actually, before he even took office, the uh, media pundits were pontificating whether he was mentally fit to take the job and, uh, you know, contemplating the cabinet, invoking the 25th Amendment. And oh, yeah. <laughs> Having them flushed out before he even took office, they were talking about that shit. And it's like the 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 irony, they have a guy who's clearly like lost his shit and uh doesn't know where he is half the time. And they uh go up there and gaslight people with the he's the sharpest oh, yeah. Biden ever. Yeah. He's never been better. It is <laughs> ironic, but but I also think it's it's uh it's Part ironic. The humiliation on ritual. Yeah. It's ironic on purpose. That's the whole thing. Is you had you had the the other dude who's actually quite entertaining once he gets on a roll, right? Like they were saying he's the crazy one, he's out of his mind, he's not fit to serve. And then you have Grandpa Shuffles uh come in and do his thing in front of the microphone for you know, uh, he can hold it together for like 2 minutes sometimes. Hey. Just so you just so you know our future reference, Rico is not a crime. That's okay. Right. That's right. That's right. She actually got that right. Rico <laughs> is not a crime. It's a statue of violation. He's a suave right. dude. <laughs> yeah, but I don't think she knew that. Yeah, that stuff is the the theater that they're playing is just to the lowest common denominator. So the CIA picked her up in a literally picked her up in a bar. Yeah. Yeah. I, and they were like, allegedly. You've got a future. Yeah. Just do what we tell you. And they've got that crazy schizo girl that with the eyes that's like, she's like from the, the movie Akira, like one of those little kids mm -hmm. that can like make you hallucinate. And there, she's the speechwriter, but she's like telepathically telling this lady, <laughs> like, have you seen this? No. It's a little bit older. 
Um, oh wait, it I was think, yeah, weird I think as I do hell. know what you're talking about. I think I knew it was it. a couple yeah. of months yeah, at least yeah, yeah. back, but it was so fucking weird. It still like perplexes yeah, me. Yeah, where the woman in front is speaking and and the uh, chick behind her is just like flipping the fuck out. Yeah, yeah. It's like she's the mega genius that writes all the political jargon or something. Like, what's she doing there, and why does she know it already? Did you guys happen to see Nicole Shanahan's PR video? Try to make her seem down to earth and into the same things we all are into. I didn't. Oh, uh, I, uh, I was. It was shared to me because uh, you know I still have people who believe their vote counts and you can vote your way out of this nonsense. Oh, I laugh, wow. but it, she's going to be it's, so good for us. I got out of the two party illusion and the voting and everything, but I really do it, genuinely believe if Trump would have been allowed to be the president for the last four years, things would be better. In what way? Do you think we would, uh, uh, like noticeable difference in your personal life? Because he was, he was against lockdowns. You could talk all the shit you want about every president and in my time, but they wars. haven't changed my day to day ever. Well, I mean, the economy, like, and and by that, I mean, what people were taking home, they had lower taxes, they had more jobs, more blah, blah, you know, uh, he spent a bunch of money. Biden spent a bunch more money. And it was like. Signed an executive. The result of the last four years. MRA. Go look around. Viable. The whole shit's falling apart. Almost by the, it looks like he's doing it on purpose. So whoever's running the thing. So. He's a buffoon. He's always been a clown. So the fact that they paraded him out there to make people angry doesn't surprise me. Mm -hmm. You know, I think we've all seen his WWF uh, Hall of Fame. I, mean, I, read I, I think he's a gifted entertainer. I really do. I, I read a stupid uh, art of a deal when I was 16 and his ghostwriter didn't really do him any favors. He seemed I like didn't that. say he was smart. <laughs> it was written that long ago? Damn. Long time ago. Long. I time didn't mean ago. it like that, my friend. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> you look at least 28, you know? He wrote a book that long ago? At least. at least. Back when rappers still thought he was cool and everything and they were trying to get him into their videos. Oh, shit. That was like 10 years ago. Before you had to delete them from Home Alone 2 or whatever? I don't, I don't take any dude seriously who's like in his 70s with like a 30-something-year-old wife or 40-year-old wife. It's like, yeah. really? You're such an honorable man. I, I don't know right. how anybody can get behind you. I didn't even vote for Obama the Still first time I ran. But I, I, like, I wanted him to win, so I was invested for the first time in my life, really, in, a, in an election. And I was so fucking betrayed and disillusioned by that that I never wanted to vote again, except for maybe to open a third party. So I was I voted for an independent guy to try to give him the six percent needed to get on the national thing. I and, still, um, I still believed in things back then too. I, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I yeah, but I was like Ron Paul all the way, two thousand eight. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. Oh. I was like, I wish I could have voted for Ron Paul too. Why doesn't anybody listen to this guy? He's making such sense. Like, I, I don't. Know. <laughs> and the and the media figures are all doing a coordinated fucking uh, like hit on the man, an axe job. Like, I'm watching, that's, I'm that's watching the, riff tracks. I stopped. I'm watching riff tracks, and Mike Ness, Mike Nelson looks at the crazy lunatic and goes, Ron Paul. You know, like just for no fucking reason. And then Sasha Cohen gets him in a hotel room and he's like, you want to jerk me off tonight? You know, just to make him look like a whatever, like just to try to make him look bad. Why are they all coordinated against the man? Because his ideas are the best ideas any politician had. He he went on the Morton Downey Jr. show a long time ago. You got to look that up if you haven't seen it. And it's <laughs> oh, I do need to look that up. I remember it's Morton been a long Downey. time since I've seen it. I, I it, remember it, seeing it, it. It was it's so beneath Ron Paul that I know to go on that dude's show. But back then he was just a you know congressman running for president as a libertarian. So um well, I don't know if you remember Morton Downey Jr., but he, he would get dickhead. somebody he would yeah, he would get he would usually get somebody on and it, he would have a repulsive uh, opinion on something and Morton Downey Jr. would yell at him for like 30 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> that was basically whole, his whole shtick. The whole crowd of jackals would like, you know, cheer, hoot and holler. It, it was, was it was before, before Jerry Springer. 
Yeah, Maury and Jerry. I mean, it was the natural evolution. Yeah. Because yeah, I mean, in a lot of ways, like Morton kind of started that whole genre. Like we wouldn't have had a Jerry Springer without Morton Downey Jr. So you know, he was kind of a pioneer. Drawing in, in the audience by giving you a heel, you know, somebody to hate. Same thing wrestling does. It's all the same. And, and basic same bitch thing entertainment. Politics does. Wait, I'm sensing and, a and, pattern here. Yeah, yeah. And who wasn't siding with that scumbag who didn't want to be found to be the daddy? You know. <laughs> I swear. Jump up and down, like do freaking backflips across the stage when they found out they weren't the daddy. <laughs> well, I mean, with some of those of, chicks, that shit was I would mostly have fake. I mean, it's kind of a natural reaction when like you're banging some nasty thing and uh there's chances that there's multiple dudes being the daddy. I, I can see pulling off a backflip or two. Those might have been real in the very beginning, but they were paying people. Five hundred oh, yeah. bucks to go in there with some story. Yeah, it, was, it was a book. scale. It was it was whatever you were willing to do. You got paid for your appearance, and then for like certain things above that, like if you uh, threw a chair, you got paid more. If you uh, took or threw a punch, you got paid more. So it was just however far you were willing to take it. It was all fucking staged, and and make up some story like you're the most degenerate example of yeah. I mean still it still doesn't take away the comedic value of um a no. woman pretending that she's afraid of balloons on Mari. You gotta look that one up. That one fucking makes me piss myself. And uh you know he's talking about her fear of balloons and asking her why and like starts bringing balloons out and she starts flipping out and runs backstage to where there's a whole fucking <laughs> bundle of balloons waiting for her and the lady i mean she sold it she really sells it fucking falling down on the ground screaming and crying <laughs> afraid of balloons ah shit the simple days when uh and they then cops away. is coming on after that i don't let Stick you around know. for cops Seriously. cops wrestling cops and jerry springer maury povich and what's his name? The ugly guy that would put people down and yell at him. What's his name? I forgot yeah. already. And see, and people think that we're we're Talking not the most the advanced the species in the universe. Why would they think that? <clears throat> That's what I I would worry about. What the aliens would pick up off of our, you know, shows that we've been sending out for the especially recently, especially this show. Maybe not this one so much. So you think Cat Williams saw the shit coming? He uh, did make some bold... I mean, he said a bunch of crazy, nonsensical shit. I think he set it. shit in motion. He did uh, a check. He was like, who's with this and who's with that? And all kinds of like, people started... In 2024, all that's hidden will be revealed. He made, he made the season come where somebody would come turn over Puff Daddy. You know what I mean? I he think, he, I think he had some... Uh... I think he others. had some advanced information. Yeah. The, I, think uh, did. I think that's what it was, as a matter of fact. If it, looking back on it now, because he did uh, uh, Shannon Sharp's podcast, and then I don't want to say the name of it because it sounds gay. Um, and then he went and did Rogan a little bit after that. Right? Yeah. Uh, and... So that was that was two huge audiences, right? So he was getting the word out to people to to people who have ears to hear, right? That something's about to be coming down the pike. Better make sure you got your shit in order. Yeah. He was he was the uh he was the messenger. Shit's about to go down. Well, I, can't I don't know how see. he knew it. Like, I don't even want to speculate on that, but yeah, I think that's what that well, was. And we touched upon this earlier in the media monarchy chat during the live morning show. Uh, the 
controlled demolition of the entertainment industry. It's on fire, you know, and but that's also happening to the dairy industry and the this and name it fucking industry in our country besides well apparently working for the government <laughs> being part of the militarized do, bureaucracy yeah, that hired weapons industry 25 million right. people yeah i mean we can't that's make, the thing can make the stuff fast enough if if i could get the if i could get the one thing across it's that every act of war whether it is shipping a tanker full of fighter jets somewhere to have them fly around and practice or to actually drop live munitions uh, anywhere is so much worse for the environment than any fucking thing, you know? Like, it's preposterous for the government to say, you can't have a wood stove, you can't collect rainwater, you can't have a garden. You don't understand your effect on the environment. Blah, 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 blah. And then go, yeah, let's blow up half of the planet. You know? They're the same people. Our representatives, this is bullshit. They don't represent us. And they're just taking away our ability to survive without, you know, their direct control. Like, this is what this is coming down to. Like, so forcing what? us into mega cities, forcing us into these fucking pods off of our land like the trail of tears like we're the indians now we are the indians now that's the whole point yeah, we sure are yeah. yeah and some of their wise people of the tribes have said to that effect the white man you're gonna be us now yep soon or something i've read that shit yeah and that's exactly what's happening that's that's why the newcomers are being brought in just like they were brought in, you know, 400 years ago. Yeah. And they're going to bring a hundred years pests. after that and a hundred years after that and a hundred years after that. And apparently this is a cycle that has just repeated over and over and over again. If you guys want, I'm organizing a uh, migrant caravan to go South. Nice. I mean, Where are we headed? All, as they are all coming North, we're going to go South somewhere near the equator. Somewhere okay. with food. Cool food forests oh dude it, if you stick to the coast you're golden absolutely golden especially like once you get down into uh yucatan like, there's just food fucking everywhere man yeah just settle in some old mayan pyramid re-engage it <laughs> get hey i'm not Ether i'm not down for the human sacrifices but you could slaughter your, the the livestock up there and get the the iron in the nutrients in the soil that way yeah, like they did like 535 congress people i mean we're not going to run out of sacrifices <laughs> okay okay we could plant a lot of corn if we had that kind of justice going <laughs> i mean the corn gods are going to be in our favor i'm just saying that's for sure an amazing amount Upper crop um the the Nord Stream pipeline was uh, the largest environmental greenhouse gas disaster in our lifetimes. And I guess that doesn't count, nor the U.S. pollution. I'm guessing if we get rid of this pesky carbon, we can all go back to, you know, not living again. <laughs> Maybe. Bury all the trees. Or you know what, Rob? Yeah. Cut those trees down. We, we, might not, we might not even have to worry about it, right? Because, uh, you know, we, we mentioned it earlier, but we might as well go ahead and just lay it on people now, I suppose. <laughs> uh, it is official, ladies and gentlemen, as reported by no less authority than uh, Alex Jones' Infowars. So you know it's true, right? CERN particle accelerator to go live during solar eclipse after two year hiatus. And it's going to turn the frog straight again. <laughs> that's, that's the working theory. Well, during the eclipse, which is not happening where CERN is, it was kind of like, what, why are they doing this? Uh, the team of scientists will be trying to prove the existence of dark matter 
which is estimated to make up around 28% of the universe despite never being seen, measured, uh, or anything because it doesn't actually exist. Unless the electric universe theory is correct, and then it's just um, a lot of money wasted on nothing. That's what right. if every monster movie is correct and the sun defeats every monster, and when there's an eclipse, you can really open the demonic portal to the fucking Cthulhu verse and call down the I main tentacle monsters. If Godzilla um, came, out, I'd be cheering for him. Yeah. So I, I can't bring myself there. I get really mad at people, but I think about kids and grandmas and shit. Well, but so what is mass calamities and everything? I can't I can't enjoy the ride like everybody wants to. What if, what if Mothra is threatening the uh, remaining reactor cores at the Fuka, Fukushima reactor center? I mean, you're gonna want Godzilla. Well, absolutely. I'm in West Virginia. I would repeat Mothman. Mothman is Mothman acceptable. would be my ambassador to Mothra. Well, I mean, like we he'd just, be my Dennis Rodman. You might in have the Far to, East. You might have to move to Baltimore. RBL. Yeah. That's that's where I, the well I don't think I would down. move back to Dundalk. I, I would be curious to know if anyone too long has, to get there. Uh, if anybody's seen Mothy in the last couple of weeks. I know Godzilla and uh I think he was driving the boat. Godzilla and uh King Kong are teaming up in a new movie coming up soon. It's Good sure for to be them. Good for highly them. entertaining. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Bring in both audiences. Absolutely. I'm all for it. Make the same movie again, please. They should do a, a Rampage movie again, but they should do it right this time with like the actual monsters. Well, I'm pretty sure King Kong is trans and Godzilla is a female now. So Yeah, but that what I'm saying, Rob, is they can build them in a fucking Chinese lab. <laughs> <laughs> build the sets I, you know you can, you can have the life-size monsters and they'll they'll not you're shit about over. The, chimer the chimeras that they're probably it's creating right. over there. not there's no fucking probably about it rob <laughs> yeah I mean, there's no taboo you, on shit you like can that find over a there. komodo dragon with a chicken i mean what are you gonna get out of it i was looking I mean, uh I I was looking at and the this is wikipedia page of a company called clone aid earlier today uh, that is headquartered out of the Bahamas, right? Uh, and they are closely associated with the Raelian movement. And uh, their specialty is cloning human beings. They've been in business since 1997. I didn't think the flying spaghetti monster was into um, cloning people. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. You have to read and monkeys, that. gorillas are very cases. strong chimpanzees very closely related mm -hmm. and also very strong so you would take a chimpanzee and and you try to splice it with a human being if you were the ccp and you would and you have and you did and this is the same leadership that killed all their sparrows and did all the other crazy dumb things so I, we could have planet of the apes for real some yeah. will escape and fuck like rabbits and take over the guy I know I do. would if I if I were to escape. Dennis Bushnell, he goes around talking about the brain chips and people from mm -hmm. like the early two thousands. He had an army, and they were implanting more and more. The uh, the Neuralink is like a joke, oh, yeah. dude. Dude's yeah, playing yeah. pong and looking up um, tentacle porn on the internet. Neuralink is the technology that the military had already developed 10 years ago. They're well, well beyond that now. Bushnell was saying that every technology that they create at DARPA, NASA, and all those agencies gets inventoried for 10 years to 40 years before it goes into Depending. Yeah. commercial use. Yeah, because everything is developed to be uh, dual purpose military and civilian. Yeah. And the, the, the two uses don't necessarily have to have any relation to one another whatsoever. That's why I, uh, I don't really think UFOs are uh, anything other than vehicles that we created. 
they they ha used to have like articles in the paper talking mm -hmm. about the military cracking anti-gravity technology in like the late mm -hmm. 40s and then all of a sudden after the war nothing it all supposedly disappeared even though they seized all the nazis technology and everything. yeah, yeah and we've yeah. got lockheed martin skunk works and we've got northrop grumman's version of the same giving us our ufos we've been seeing for the past probably as long as i've been alive that's what i think too and the um the ancient indian texts about liquid mercury and electricity creating a electromagnetic field so oh, yeah the vimanas i think they called it that they were flying around the sky i mean it's it's crazy if you read that stuff You yeah. get it moving like gyroscopically and with its great mass. It I There's guess people, negates um, gravity. videos on YouTube where they apply electrical current to mercury like in a dish and it'll start like fucking spinning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've seen those, yeah. It's and like it, we watched all the same videos. Yeah, right. <laughs> Let's talk about the pyramid power. Generator. Yeah, uh, we all like, got the same classification from the algorithm. Like we all <laughs> got grouped together. All these people are like, put them over here. They found like large pools of mercury underneath the uh, Mexican pyramids, and the Chinese had a big bunch of. You don't hear much about the Chinese ones, man. I I don't know like why they're so tight with the information. I forget what it's called, but there's all these. Uh, Couldn't have had anything to do terracotta... with the British. Not at all. There's a, a terracotta army of like thousands of like realistic life size soldiers mm -hmm. made, and then there's like pools of mercury and a miniature like Beetlejuice mini Japan or China. I mean, like it's crazy, oh. and it's all underground, and it's all for this the tomb of the, the one emperor. And like they won't open it again, like you you look at it like once or something like that. Never heard of this thing? Yeah, I've heard of the Terracotta Army. Heard of the okay. Terracotta Army and the There's Mercury there cave. also. Somewhere. The crazy cave system that they cut out. Mm -hmm. It's like thousands of tons of stone they don't even know where it went to. I know That's where pretty it went interesting. To. <laughs> That's pretty Great interesting. Wall? You see all no. the uh, the places over in Asia that built like underground cities and Especially Turkey. There's like a network of those things. They're in Kuyu. Right? Dude, there's, yeah, there's a whole underside of this planet that most people don't even know exists. Like the, yeah. all yeah. the stuff that's under the surface uh, of what we interact with every single day. Unfucking believable. It's basically like a whole other planet. Military bases, cave systems, all of this shit. And people just have no idea. Yeah, it's definitely interesting. They're not very forthcoming with the information. And you hear a bunch of bullshit stories that, uh, I can't, what the hell was that dude's name who was supposedly that, working on deep underground military bases? Schneider, and, Phil Schneider. Schneider. Yeah. yeah, I got my hand blown off because the alien waved his hand in a motion and then shot a phaser beam at me. So his first, supposedly his first reaction to seeing the aliens was pulling a pistol, which the dude wouldn't have had a pistol because he was a construction worker. And he, he supposedly just started shooting without even <laughs> being threatened. <laughs> he just went like full Danny DeVito. Yeah. <laughs> got pulled I out thought, of there. I thought... I well, thought he, he, witnessed, he witnessed an army guy get waxed with a laser first before he did anything, I thought. I thought it supposedly like, cut his chest open, too. He, he had yeah. Right. He got hit with two lasers, he said. And then he was like, I'm hiding in a hotel. I can't give my real name. They're after me. I'm uploading this from the Wi-Fi at McDonald's or something. You know what I mean? He was on the run. It made it seem real almost. But yeah, I don't know about that. I don't know. Could be. Bill Cooper's story is pretty interesting too, but a lot mm. of it hard to believe. <laughs> I guess 
I guess he recanted on some of the alien stuff. He he said he was fed false information. He said in his book that the alien stuff, he couldn't confirm it. And I, I think that's the way it went. There was a few things in his book where he said that he can't, you know, definitively say if it's true or not, but right. this is what people told him. So, yeah, it was a lot of that mixed in. But there was a lot of stuff that, yeah, fucking 100%. Yeah, it's it's interesting. it's interesting listening to his broadcast. It really is. I never listened to any of his broadcasts except that little clip when uh, in August, I think it was either June or August of 2001 when he was saying that if a guy named Bin Laden oh, yeah. <laughs> used of this, then don't believe it. Yeah, and it was he died almost three months after beforehand. That. Yeah, he died shortly after that. Well, yeah, he died in November of 2001 in a shootout uh, with uh, police, law enforcement, because it was more than uh, more than one bureau was present to serve the warrant. They were tax Allegedly. collecting men, tax yeah. collectors. Yeah, I mean, why wouldn't tax collectors need a gun? <laughs> Just well, that's what the warrant was about. Because right? you're stealing from out. people. Just because you're stealing from people under some fake authority, I guess some people might get a little hostile about that. But don't worry, because you'll well, own nothing, and you'll be Rob, happier. Rob, that's the story yeah. was they didn't present Hold themselves it. as law enforcement. They were like presenting themselves as armed ruffians driving around and his doing fucking donuts and shit yeah they were trying to get a reaction out of him and he went out there with his gun and they took the advantage and slaughtered him yeah wow that's, that's the way i heard it too that yeah. wouldn't surprise me but he predicted 9-11 and tied bin laden to it yep and then afterwards someone he said was a shill alex jones did the same thing Mm -hmm. he died well no he didn't like, he didn't say alex jones was a shill or he might have said that but he did what i, I remember what i remember him saying was alex jones is a dirty liar some shit like that yeah, yeah. that's i mean that's like the same thing to me but okay. that was like that was the first broadcast that we started listening to because i play uh the hour of the time every wednesday night i just pick like well, a random episode and, and we listen to it i love that I love that change. I mean, I was listening to the hour of the time myself because I thought it was compelling yeah. when I learned they both predicted it. This guy was first. He was murdered by like basically the governmental employees. This guy, he's a millionaire. <laughs> he said, you know, I'm like, I'm going to listen to this guy a little bit, you know? And I also was like looking into how, Militia man Marvin in Salem, West Virginia in 1995 knew everything about the communist news network, CNN, and like the the New World Order and the, you know, mm. the United Nations threat uh, to our sovereignty and all this stuff he was telling me about when I was 15 years old, just trying to go ride a skateboard past this old dude, you know, like without the Internet, how do you get that shortwave Bill Cooper? That's how I. <laughs> I pieced it together hmm. after he planted seeds. Yeah. yeah before I even um, knew what controlled opposition was, or was uh, as knowledgeable about the way the world really works as I am now, I knew Alex Jones was full of shit. Dude would tell you stuff that, you know, was true. And then he'd go out there and yell at people with a fucking megaphone acting like a total lunatic. So like to, to try to use him as a source of any information anybody was yeah. you invite ridicule to yourself and your like critical thinking skills. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause he was, he's bombastic. Oh yeah. He, he goes on these crazy rants off topic. He's an entertainer. You can. Yeah. Well, yeah, he's a, he's a huckster. He just happens to be, you know, family tied to military intelligence and, you know, I mean, I, Bill I heard, Cooper spoke way, passionately. I heard his great grandmother was a psychic. That's right. Who worked with the authorities? <laughs> Pretty everybody in his family did something like work yeah, with the Manhattan family. Project or like something. You know, like what the fuck? Okay. 
I mean, he started out on public access TV. Like, nobody fucking watches that shit. Like, somehow, uh, in other words, someone gave him some funding. Yep. Even Wayne's World had Mr. Big. Mm -hmm. Somebody's been keeping him going all these years. There's no question the about that. It's it's not from selling fucking dick pills and supplements and t-shirts. That's he's not where his money's walk coming into from. Like religious distribution, like he's had to link up with church radio to get you know on short waves and stuff. I think his next uh, I noticed recently. rabbi and to um, declare his whole empire, his temple, and uh, be tax free. But see, now I can get I, down with that. Maybe I'm reading them wrong. <laughs> no, actually, I, I, I hope he does it. I hope he sets the model so that uh, Liberty Radio can follow uh, in those footsteps and we can become the church of Liberty Radio. Fuck yeah. Let's do it. Oh, yeah. I'm sure I can come up with all kinds of religious reasons. Dude, we could buy, gonna... we could buy. The acoustics in churches? Are you fucking kidding me? We could really put on a show every week. Church oh. slash band hall. You know, don't call it a nightclub. You don't want that dance hall. We might have dance hall. Dance, dance hall. hall. Dance hall. Yep. Yeah, that's it. Band hall. Band hall. Dance hall. There you go. Band. I like it. I I'm like where this is heading. Good fun the operation with TikTok videos. <laughs> From what I've heard, <laughs> I, that's that's where the eyes are. So I mean, I guess that's what what we're gonna have to do. I don't know. I'm still, you know, all the time I've been just acting like a fool for free. Didn't realize, you know, if I got people to record it, I could be a internet sensation for being a clown. Yeah, you don't even need Bob Saget. <clears throat> rest him. He probably had a stroke from the clot shot and then fell and hit his head, like so many others. Yeah, but you could have already been a millionaire by now, Rob. If you if you had started day one of lockdown, you could be bigger than Tim Pool right now. <clears throat> Think about that. I don't know. I can't like lie to people as a as like a <laughs> way of life kind of thing. It just but feels slimy. You get paid to do it, Rob. I. I feel like I got cursed with this conscience or I would be taking advantage of dumb people and, uh, you know, sell them sham wows or something. My pillow. You can start a charity and it has, fundraise. It has, it has the Trump logo on it. So you know That's, that it's quality. Oh did you guys hear about the Trump Bible? I did. <laughs> like the sneakers right enough. Right. How much money? How much money do these dumb people have that he can milk out of them for uh, all this shit to pay legal fees? <laughs> I, I don't know, dude. I'm I'm a little bit pissed. I didn't think of it myself. I am. I honestly am because it it if you're gonna buy a Bible, this this is the one to buy because well, it's I, got, I got it's got the Bible. It's got the Declaration of Independence. It's got the Constitution. I think it's got a copy of the Art of the Deal in there as well. All of that for sixty bucks, and it's got the name Trump on it, right on the front, prominent in gold leaf. Sounds like quality paper to wipe your ass with. <laughs> Only sixty bucks. Be the best sixty bucks you've ever spent, Rob. I guarantee it. The funny thing is, dude is losing his mental faculties, whether, you know, people you want to see him or not. He's like, I mean, 70 fucking seven years old. What? Why would anybody that old want to be in charge of anything? Like, I I don't want to be in charge of fucking people. I, I just want to live my life and uh, my friends, family, community. I don't understand this uh, this power fucking thing, and it's, it's fake power. It's just like figurehead status. Why would you like that? It as fake as it all is. If you look at any of the people who've been president in our lifetimes, you can visibly see that they've aged 
more than the average person in the time that they were in that office. Whether it's because they have to uh, look the other way um, <laughs> with all this scumbaggery going on in the world and uh, play the role or whatever it is, it seems to be a high pressure job. Well, then I mean, there, least, there has to be a payoff, by, right? Joe Biden, they're yeah. mixing in. <laughs> there, there has to be a reason that these people are doing it. Otherwise, you're right. Nobody would do it. Do they have that much dirt on you that they can pull you out of, like, you know, when you should be hanging out at the beach and the grandkids and just chilling, enjoying your life? No, I think Joe Biden has actually logged the most hours playing golf. <clears throat> As president, I, I could be wrong on that. It may actually be the most hours on vacation, uh, but I, I I know he's got one of those records. Like Joe Biden is is a record setting president. You guys just don't appreciate it. Well, he doesn't answer any questions. Um, he's like cycled through two of the dumbest people you could ever have for press secretary. Circle back Saki and um, Sugar Bear. Well, Sugar Bears, Jean Claude Van Damme, whatever her name is, she is the dumbest thing ever, and it's uh, it's amazing watching her trying to gaslight those people. It's like the, you, your eyes are deceiving you and your ears are deceiving you. Um, this guy's the most competent eighty year old you've ever seen. I mean, I'm pretty sure the. the <laughs> the drive through line at Wendy's would be pretty backed up if he was running the shift. Well, goddamn. If Joe Biden is the most competent 80-year-old that we've ever seen, we need to stop letting 80-year-olds participate in government. There, there should be an age limit. There's a, there's Absolutely, a minimum. Absolutely, there should be an age limit. And yeah, I think I 80 is it. Like If you're 80, you're too old to serve as a public servant, because guess what? You're probably not going to be here tomorrow. And that means we're going to have to take extra time to fill that spot whenever it is that you decide to kick off. Yeah. And when you like take like a vice president, also fuck the state, <laughs> a vice president. That's so fucking hated that people would rather um, pretend like a zombies in charge than <laughs> pretend that she's in charge that's the humiliation ritual has uh pretty much come full circle i think so i think i but we're we're just now at the end of march rob it, we're we're not at the end of the season of reveal yet all right, to, to basically bring things full circle here in the final five minutes before midnight on the East Coast. We're just there coming is out. yet more to be unveiled this year. We're just coming out of train crash season, and now we're like rolling into boat crash season. Right. Um, I still had my acorn cop decorations up for crying out loud. <laughs> I. I'm wondering what the next bridge to be taken out by a boat is going to be. I mean, the Chesapeake Bay Bridge. I mean, that's no, 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 no. Twenty-four no. miles long or something like that. With it's the tunnel, I think, I think it'll be a tunnel. If a they tunnel. want to hit something again in Baltimore, it'll be a tunnel. Say they're hitting something. They could cripple it really, like take out the, the tunnel that people are going to try to use now that the bridge is gone. Like mm. maybe that's coming out of my ass. I, I can't remember where the tunnels are in relation the to next where. Tony Baloney crisis. We can get people all riled up about. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean it was just like where would we like to cause panic tonight? I I actually had read earlier that it would it would screw up shipping quite a bit. Something so. everybody yeah. has in their house right now and is already a little bit afraid of. The house cat flu. <laughs> what comes through the port there? Ikea furniture? Aldi groceries? Like what? everything. Food, fuel, um, consumer goods. You name it. Like it's it's a full service port. Like it was it's one of the major uh 
uh, shipping centers on the East Coast. Always has been. Baltimore Harbor, yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful at night. It used to be anyway. When I was a kid, I'd hop on the light rail and sneak oh, out just to go there. I We took um, a field trip when I was in elementary school to the Inner Harbor. We went to the... Um, aquarium? Yes, the aquarium. Thank you. Uh, I was struggling to find that word. Uh, and, you know, the shape it was, of it. It was, you know, we were seven, eight years old walking through Baltimore, like, we weren't we weren't worried about anything bad happening to us. Yeah. And like ever since then, like I've just watched the steady decline of Baltimore. And it yeah. used to be riots. Apparently used to be one of the great cities of America. Allegedly. Yeah, it's a rough area around the aquarium. My mom was banging out the last two years of her uh job sentence before retirement with riots and people driving vans into bricks and <laughs> dropping buildings and all this stuff looming. She barely got out of there before it got crazy. You know, crazier. I feel like I did. I benefited from uh, coming to West Virginia in 92 uh, and, and leaving Baltimore. Yeah. Those kids up there did a lot of like heroin for fun. Oh, I can imagine. Kids down here were, were drinking uh, beer and smoking weed. It was a different scene. Right. Just for starters, you know, less gang activity and stuff like that. Yeah. Eventually they got to the meth, but that was a little bit after 92. Yeah. I remember. I, remember. I mean, stay tuned next week where I teach you the recipe where you shake up a bottle of chemicals from Walmart in the bathroom I mean, in a Mountain Dew bottle. Preferably, you get, a homeless, you get a homeless person to shake it up for you. And if he comes out with a product, he gets paid. If he causes a fire, he kind of like flee the scene. Oh, that's going to get us kicked off of something. I guarantee it. <clears throat> I know a guy who went blind looking at a shake and bake meth bottle. He thought Jokes. it was actually the uh, the kid's explosion with the foil trick in the Drano. A little muriatic acid and uh, yeah, right to the eyes bottle with uh, tin foil. Yes, yeah, he thought it was meth because he saw some kids shake it up and put it in the trash can. He was like, "Oh, they're making meth," and they got scared. I, it's my meth now, and he's like looking at it when it explodes and he lost both his eyes. Wow, some derelict kid showed me that when I was like twelve years old. He's like, "Yeah, you take this stuff, like painting, 